I have a question for you. Do you do the small sceneries on the last page of your notebook? I used to do that when I was in school. I used to draw some triangles in place of the mountains, some trees and maybe a river. Of course, the sun in the sky. I would also draw the light from the sun. Do you do that too? A few straight lines around a circle to represent the sunlight? Now, even in physics, we represent light using straight lines. But why straight lines? Well, you know that light travels along a straight line. So, it only makes sense that we use a straight line to represent light. Therefore, we use rays to depict the path of light on paper. Now, light always originates at a source, right? The same way a ray starts at the source and goes on indefinitely until it hits an obstacle. Therefore, a ray is represented by a line with a fixed point at one end and the other end extends indefinitely. While we can represent it on paper, it's not possible to actually observe a single light ray. So what do we see when we observe light? Well, we actually see a beam of light. Consider the light from a torch. You can see a beam of light arising from the source here. Now, how do we represent this beam on paper? It is simply a group of light rays. Therefore, the light beam from this torch can be represented on paper like this. Do you notice something here? The rays are moving away from each other as they travel forward. This means that the beam of light is spreading as it travels. Such a beam that spreads outwards as it travels is called a divergent beam of light. As these rays are moving away from each other, they never meet. Now, what about the opposite? That is, a beam that becomes narrower as it travels? Well, such a beam is called a convergent beam. An example is the sunlight focused by a magnifying glass. Converging rays come closer as they travel. They eventually meet at a single point. However, there are some beams that never diverge or converge. Their width remains constant as they travel. Such a beam is called a parallel beam. It is called so because the rays in a parallel beam are parallel to each other. This means the distance between rays in a parallel beam remains constant. A laser beam is a perfect example of a parallel beam. Moreover, a beam becomes parallel if the light source is really, really far away. For example, the sunlight that reaches the Earth does so as a parallel beam. Now, let's look at a brief summary of what we learned. The path of light is depicted on paper using a light ray. A single ray cannot be observed in real life. In real life, we observe light as a beam. A beam is represented by a group of light rays. A beam of light can be divergent, convergent or parallel. That was all about rays and beams. I'll see you next time. Till then, keep learning.